risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us bless and light the Paschal candle. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to Him, and all ages. To Him, the glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Christ our Passover has been crucified for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Our opening hymn today is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Thank you.
welcome all brothers and sisters to this wonderful and beautiful morning celebrating the resurrection of Christ on this magnificent Easter Eucharistic morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us remain in silence as we prepare our hearts in confession. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive what we have been, amend what we are, and, and direct, direct what we, we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Gloria. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God on
Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory, the glory, the glory of the Father. Lord be with you and also with you collect for the Sunday of Easter Almighty God who through your only begotten Son Jesus Christ overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Today's first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shout that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. It will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the, fit, the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, that is, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We stand for the responsorial psalm. Responsorial psalm, Psalm chapter 118, verse 1 to 2 and 14 to 24. Let's say the refrain together. I, I will, will give thanks, thanks to you. For you, you have become, become my salvation. salvation. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. I, I will give, give thanks, thanks to you, for you have become, become my salvation. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. I will give, I will give thanks, thanks to you, you for you have become, become my salvation. salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, <clears throat> that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. I will, I will give, give thanks, thanks to you, for you, you have become my salvation. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I will, I will give, give thanks, thanks to you, for you, you have, have become, become my salvation. salvation. Please be seated for the second reading.
The second reading today is taken from the Acts of the Apostles in the 10th chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please rise for the gradual hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises. The Lord bless his holy gospel in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the gospel of St. Mark, reading from chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun has risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us, for the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robes, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that has been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterwards, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to the west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Very good morning to all of you. And it is so good to see all these beautiful faces because for the last few months I've been looking at three ugly faces standing there all the time when I preach. Calvin, Raymond, and Ken. And once in a while, when we could get uh, Rico to come and help as well, uh, I see a fourth ugly face. But today, it's so different. It is so nice. And yet, at the same time, we are reminded how fallible we are because the acorn decided to fall off and started burning the paper flowers. But this is a good thing. Why? It reminds us that we are fallible. It reminds us that we are but human. It reminds us like Mary, Mary Magdalene and Salome, we can be amazed by things that will happen that is not in our expectation. I didn't see the fire until he came to tell Kelvin. And then when I looked at it, I thought, wonderful. Because it reminds us that we do need our Lord Jesus Christ, who is perfect. And just as the women entering the tomb saw the young man, and the young man had to say to them, why are you here? The Lord is risen. Why are we here? The Lord is risen. We are here because of three things. One, to remember that we are fallible and that in need of the salvation that Christ has given us. Two, to remember our Lord Yahweh, God Almighty, 
will punish us for our sins. And as the lesson we read today, He will punish us sternly, and yet He will not let us die. Finally, thirdly, our scripture reminds us the God who raised our Christ from the dead is the God who keeps His promise. And as the psalm said, His loving kindness is with us forever. Given these difficult times, when we look or at least I look every day at the news to find out how many fewer people are infected. I get infected too because the numbers kept falling until there were only two local infections. And then I was praying, maybe tomorrow there'll be none. And then maybe finally the government would allow us to worship. Lo and behold, I was wrong. God showed how fallible I was. Even my prayers were rejected. Twenty infected the next day. And I was thinking, oh God, you know, don't play such trick on us. You know, the government is looking at these figures to decide whether we can worship together. But then God will not disappoint us. We received a letter from government officially saying that we may worship together, that we must all wear masks, that we must uh, use our safe from home apps and uh, take that uh, QR code. Okay, how many of you didn't do it? Okay, good. Now, please remember to do it, all right? Now, and that at the same time, we were reminded that only 30% of us are allowed in here. But that is God's way, isn't it? God will put a lot of barriers on our way. The women who went to the tomb, they thought of one barrier. That stone covering the mouth of the cave where the new tomb was. How are three women going to remove that huge stone? Now, if you look at the Hollywood movies, all right, the stone is huge. I mean, it's about my height, you know, and, and, and it has to be rolled. It's, it's round. But if you have been to Jerusalem and you've looked at the barriers, uh, the, the graves, all right, and these caves, actually, the stone is not that huge, all right? The stone is maybe about that big, that big, all right, and maybe about that thick. But still, for women... Okay, sorry. For some women, <laughs> it's not possible. But the, I, I'm sure, like, you know, there are a few here with... <laughs> anyway, practice from pulling teeth. All right? Practice from conducting. I'm sure they have lots of biceps. All right? They may be able to remove it. But the three women, remember, in those days, they're not as tall as the women today. They are small. All right? maybe about four feet, eight to five. They were malnourished because they were not rich. They were poor women. Poor women who yet were willing to give what they had so that Jesus could carry out his ministry. And these are the women who went to the grave. And they were worried that there would be stumbling blocks. And just like you and me, we are worried today we are worried today because we are not sure whether the COVID-19 would end. We are told that even if everyone gets inoculated, herd immunity would take about a year. But the biggest problem is there are still a lot of doubts as to how effective the vaccine is. But even more, frightening for quite a number is that there will be side effects. Now, I've taken the shots. Right? At my age, I'm 68, two bouts of cancer, recovered from it, considered a long-term illness patient, 
I took the vaccine, no problem. All I had was perhaps a swell here. Okay, how many of you have taken the vaccine? I know some of you here have. All right. Uh, did you collapse? Uh, did you suffer heart attacks, blood clots, or, or did you die? No, you didn't. All right. You are here. So do not be afraid of these misinformation. Do not be afraid of what others tell you. Oh, you know, that vaccine from that country, that vaccine from that country, all right? It doesn't matter. The roadblocks will always be there. The roadblocks, not merely of misinformation and disinformation, the biggest roadblocks that we face is ourselves, our own doubts. Usually at uh, Holy Week, I choose to read one very difficult book every year. <laughs> and this year, I chose Thomas Aquinas' uh, treatise on the resurrection. Uh, both the philosophical arguments and the biblical arguments. It was 380 pages, and this morning I was trying to read the last few pages. And he began to talk about how over a thousand years, there were doubts, doubts whether Jesus rose from the dead, doubts whether the Jesus who died on the cross was a human being. Doubts whether the Jesus who laid in the tomb was merely an illusion, a mirage. And doubts whether he really rose from the grave because there were rumors, and we read in the gospel, all right, that the high priest was worried that the disciples would steal the body and spread rumors that he was resurrected, and that is why they put an extra big stone in front of the grave and sealed it and had soldiers camping outside just to make sure nobody comes and steal it. But even then, the doubts continued. Even after reading the gospel lesson where the angel appeared to the women and said, He is not here, he is risen, and he has gone ahead of you to Galilee where he will meet up with you there. And even with these words, there continues to be the doubt because there are people like me who want scientific arguments, who want philosophical arguments, who want biblical proof. And for us, that doubt continues. And St. Thomas had tried arguing from Aristotle's essential arguments down to biblical scriptures and down to the question of revelation. Can science explain the resurrection? Yes, it can. But can science prove the resurrection? No, it can't. Can philosophy explain the resurrection? Anytime. Aristotle, all right, 2,600 years ago, explained how a dead person can live eternally after death. But philosophy, too, cannot prove it. It is a matter of faith. It is a matter of faith whether you believe that God created the universe and at the creation of the universe, He laid down a plan. He laid down the fundamental laws of nature. And then history began. And throughout history, he began to establish the fundamental laws of human nature. And yet, he put something into his creation. For God, perfection is not a robotic world. He did not create robots for human beings. You know, it would have been a lot simpler if he had created robots. There would be no sin. And he would not need to tell 
mankind that there are two trees from which they cannot eat. But he realized that if he created what man thinks to be perfect, creation would not be perfect. Because the creation God wanted, the children he wanted, were those who would challenge him, who would question him, who would doubt him, and even think of other ways than God's way of doing things. Now, many of you as parents would have wished you had a kid who would do everything you say, who would be so perfect that you won't get a phone call while you are working from the class teacher say, can you come over to school? So I need to talk to you about your son. He's running around and he's not obeying me and he's looking all over the place and he hasn't have handed in his homework. How many of you had phone calls like this from school? None? All right, then your kid is in trouble. He should be, he should be, he should be lively. He should be challenging the teacher. He should be asking a lot of questions, so much so that the teachers will give you a call and say, look, come and deal with your son. God created a perfect universe, but not your perfection, not your idea of perfection. His idea of perfection is a world that is asymmetrical. In other words, he built into mankind the ability to disobey God. And that is why, metaphorically, in the story of creation in chapter 3 and chapter 2, he told mankind, you know, eat anything except the tree in the middle of the garden, all right, the tree of life. You cannot eat that. And then through the snake who guarded Right. Mind you, the Bible never said, the Old Testament never said that snake was Satan. It was only in the New Testament. All right? That snake originally was the guardian of wisdom, the guardian of the fruit to decide good and evil. Now, the moment God said that, you cannot eat of these two things. He gave you and I this choice, this freedom of choice to decide whether you want to obey God or disobey God. And this is what God wanted. He wanted us to doubt Him. Because it is only when we begin to doubt that we will learn. It is only when we make mistakes that we will grow to be mature adults. It is only when we make mistakes and suffer for it, that we know what suffering truly is. That when we see an old woman sleeping under the steps and stairways, hungry, lonely, cold, and maybe sick, that compassion, true compassion rise in our hearts. And all the more so, our God wants to tell us in Holy Week that He too suffers. He suffers because of you and me. He knew He was going to suffer when He gave us the freedom of choice. He knew that would happen. And he knew that that would be the only way he can create the type of children he wanted. Children, when given the choice, either make mistakes and from those mistakes learn from that and to learn to love him truly by learning to love others and even their own enemies. People who dislike them, people who hate them, and we see that. We see that on our news. Because of COVID-19, many Asians are suffering a racist backlash, not only because of Trump constant preaching 
about racism, but also because there are so many falsehoods in this world and hatred. I grew up in a country that institutionalized racism. And if you are not of a particular race, the chances of you getting into university is very, very low because out of every 10 seats, only three are allowed to Chinese and Indians and whites. The rest are reserved for a particular group. You try to apply for a scholarship, no way. If your name is not of a particular type and your religion is not a particular type, then your chances of getting those scholarship is almost zero unless you score straight A stars in your A levels or 45 over 45 in your IB. But even then, the chances of getting it is very slim. But growing up, when we ourselves not only see suffering, but we ourselves suffer from it, whether it's because of an individual or whether it's institutionalized in national laws, then we realize how God truly loves us. When He suffered for us, when He was beaten for us, when He was insulted for us, and when He was nailed on the cross for us. Remember when Jesus on the cross said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Very many of us thought that God lost hope. Why have you forsaken me? I mean, we, we do that all the time, isn't it? Why have you forsaken me? Why have you cheated me? Why have you done this to me? Why have you disappointed me? I'm sure all of you would say that to your kids. You know, he comes away with 96 over 100, not 100 over 100. You will say, why have you disappointed me? Mrs. Wong's son got 100 over 100. You got 94 over 100. Not good enough. When we disappointed God, did he say not good enough? According to our text today, God will punish us. He's stern. But he will not let us, let us die. Why? Because he himself has chosen to die for us. And so when Christ on the cross said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is not an act of disappointment. Because if you read from Psalms 22, and Jesus was quoting Psalms 22, all right, and in the Hebrew Bible, Psalms 22 and 23 are one psalm. If you go down the psalm, right, after saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right in the middle, it says, Though I am surrounded by my enemies, I will not fear. Why? Because God is with me. And then it jumps into Psalm 23, what is now Psalm 23. It repeats again, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Precisely because I know God has prepared for me a feast in front of my enemies. And this is the promise that God has given us in the death and resurrection of Christ. On the surface, historically, it seems that God was defeated by Satan. Christ died on the cross, but God tells us He turns that defeat into victory, just as he turns his punishment of you into salvation. And then when Christ said, I thirst, many of you don't understand that. You think, oh, you know, what kind of God is this? I mean, he's thirsty. I mean, God is not supposed to be thirsty. God is not supposed to die. But Jesus said it on purpose. Why? Because if you read the Gospel of St. Luke, the Gospel of St. John, the Gospel of uh, St. Uh, Matthew, and the Gospel of Mark, you can reconstruct this story, that there was a flask of wine, of sour wine, that is fresh. Nobody has drunk from that yet. That was laid aside, reserved. Reserved for whom? 
And when Christ said, I thirst, we knew and we know that it's for Christ. Now, let me walk back a bit. Now, at the Feast of the Passover, there are four set of cups that the participants of the Passover would drink. The four glass cups of wine. But there is a fifth cup. There's a fifth cup that's been reserved. Nobody drinks from it. It's for the prophet Elijah. It's an expectation at the Passover celebrated yearly that the prophet Elijah will finally come leading the host of heaven to save the Israelites. And so when Christ on the cross said, I thirst, he's saying that he has come to drink that fifth cup because he's the Elijah that they have been waiting for. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. And so he drank from it in fulfillment of the promise of God that salvation has now come. So on this morning, after Christ has drank the fifth cup of wine, the cup of Elijah, he rises from the dead. He rises so that the angel can tell us he's risen, he's not here. And so for you too, this is the promise. For you too, when you face difficulties in the days to come, and you will face difficulties, not only because of your mistakes, but of the mistakes of others. And when you want to give up, and when you say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Remember, remember the words in Psalm 23. Remember the fifth cup of wine that Jesus Christ drank from on the cross. And remember the words of the angel who said, he's risen indeed. So that you too may have courage. You too may have strength. You too may have hope that is real. Amen. Please stand for the nice input. Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look for the, the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the intercession of prayers. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world we pray for the church as we celebrate the christ's resurrection today 
We pray for all Christian communities that they may experience a renewed spirit of commitment and faith wherever there is religion, religious persecution, darkness, or despair. May the golden dawn of the resurrection transform all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and serve the common good. We pray for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus in Hong Kong and in other parts of the world. Bring peace to those worried, fearful and uncertain as the virus spreads. We also pray for governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus and those in health services who may be risking their own lives to care for sick patients. Send your spirit, O Lord, to the people of Myanmar that no matter what their ethnic background, their religion, their job, or their status, calm heads may prevail during this time of tension and peace win the day. Grant wisdom and insights into the leaders that they may see the common bond that make us all your children and sisters and brothers to one another. In order that all this is done for the common good, we pray, Lord, that you set the feet or to walk the way respectful and non-violent dialogue and make the hands of all to labour towards constructive cooperation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to honour, to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them as we love one another, one another as he loves us. Pray for all the students, teachers and education, educators and support staff and parents that they may feel supported by the Lord and by our faith communities as they navigate the return to the classroom after Easter. Pray also for the school leadership teams, that they may be guided by the Spirit as they seek to endure the safety of our young people and those who serve them in the schools. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. At this time, we lift to you those from all nations and backgrounds who work on the front line in healthcare. Give them skills and wisdom in their work. Be their strength and their shield as they give of themselves in the care of others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray for that we may share with all the saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for the victims, those injured and their families in the Taroko Express train accident in Taiwan. We pray for the victims to rest in eternal peace and for the injured to recover as soon as possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, wherewith the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and with, also you. with you. Let us exchange the sign of peace.
the offertory, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. Our offer to Him today is Jesus lives, thy terrors now. All things, All things come, come from, from you, O Lord, Lord and, and of your own do we give you. you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. And therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to death and evil, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it 
He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant, my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the Holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity and constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. And forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
We do not presume to come, to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, to so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that, that we may evermore dwell in him, and, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please be seated. the blood of Christ. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep thy body.
send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The announcement. Good morning, brothers, sisters, and Reverend Canon Dr. Chong. Welcome you all to St. Augustine's Chapel. Good to see so many of you here physically on Easter Day. Greetings to you who are joining us via live stream as well. A particular welcome to Wong Rock Men who is back with us today after having been away for some time. We hope to see you at our Sunday service regularly. Please refer to the pew sheet for full details of our church news. I just want to further emphasize on point one, two, and four regarding the resumption of our public worship service. We thank you for cooperating with the precautionary measures. We encourage all of you to worship together at a chapel and will make necessary arrangements to stay within the 30% government requirements and keep everybody safe. Sunday school will continue to be conducted, conducted online at 9.15 on Sunday morning until further notice. Thank you. Please time for the blessing. The peace of God, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, may you make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The closing hymn today is Alleluia, Alleluia, Pass to Heaven. 